class, before we get started, I want to let you know that I'm doing a little contest right now where you can win your own video as well as a little Hamid portrait of a historical figure of your choosing, possibly. Uh, I'll put a link right here as well as one in the doobly-doo. And now to our video, time is not real. Well, it is real in the respect that what I'm saying now happened before what I'm saying now. It's how we measure time that's not real, okay? Let's sit here for seven seconds and go. Long seven seconds, right? Well, wrong. It was actually a short seven seconds because it was actually six seconds. I just told you it was seven and you might have believed it. And if enough people believed it, six seconds would become seven seconds. Time as we know it is just a unit of measurement, like feet or pounds, it's arbitrary. Which brings up the topic of the passage of time and the upcoming holiday, New Year's Eve. Yes, that time of year when we stay up late, class it up with champagne, and put on silly glasses that obstruct our view. Soon it will be 2014, a chance to start anew. But why 2014? How has this become the accepted year throughout much of the world? For that, Let's go back to the ancient Romans. See, it's said that the first Roman calendar was whipped up by Romulus, the first Roman king, in 753 BC. But the original 10-month Roman calendar had a problem. It only had 304 days. It was divided oddly into moon-centered units like calends and gnomes and eyes. But the missing of about 61 days totally messed up the alignment of things like seasons. And by 700 BC, the two months we know of, January and February, were added to the beginning, pushing the other 10 back. That explains why December, with its prefix meaning 10, is actually the 12th month. Wouldn't it have just made more sense to put the noobs at the back of the line? So the Roman calendar was now good, but it was not great. It was still about 10 days off annually. Every now and then, a month known as the intercalary month would be thrown in to course correct. But that was a pain, and since political terms were based on the calendar, throwing in an extra month every now and then had big implications. Enter Julius Caesar. After becoming dictator of Rome, Julius Caesar, known as Orange Julius to his friends, had his astronomers make up a calendar that, you know, would actually work. A year system was created that was 365.25 days long. It was determined that an extra leap day would be added every four years, and this year became a leap year to make up for the .25 remainder. But it did not come without its headaches. When it first started, there was a lot to make up for, so the year 46 BC was 445 days long. Oh, and when Julius didn't heed the whole Ides of March warning and the whole Senate killed him, the new emperor and his great nephew Augustus changed the month Quintilius to July to honor him. And apparently, since nobody had a problem with that, he also renamed Sextilius August after himself. And the shift from the Roman to the Julian calendar also marked the shift of the new year. And while New Year's previously had an agricultural setting in March 1st, it was now moved to January 1st. I guess now is a good time to also address that kooky Roman cult, the Christians. First off, no one really knows exactly when Jesus Christ was born. There are scant records of him as a historical figure, and the New Testament doesn't explicitly state anything as his birth date. Using the few clues we do have, he was probably born in the spring and almost assuredly not born on December 25th. So why that day then? Many scholars point to the fact that the winter solstice and the Roman holiday of Saturnalia fell around this time. And if everyone else is having a party, you're gonna find a way to have one too. This place Christmas, or the birth of Christ, squarely on December 25th. But why not January 1st? As long as we're making up a birthday, why not put it at the start of the year? I mean, the calendar itself, the BC, the AD, is all based on the birth of Christ. That part might be explained by the Jewish tradition of circumcising a boy on his eighth day. By placing Christmas on December 25th, that would mean January 1st was the first time Jesus shed blood for the sins of man. And on that note, we're going to end part one of Why Will It Be 2014. Make sure you subscribe so that you can get part two. Again, click here to learn more about the contest where you can win your own video and your own Hamabi portrait if you live in the U.S. Follow me on Twitter at MrBetsClass. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Be safe, and I'll see you next time.